Cool. All right. Well, um, welcome everyone. Um, we appreciate you being online tonight. And um, for everybody that's watching the replay as well, we appreciate your interest in this and uh, we are looking forward to it. Um, you know, as, as you've probably heard us say before, um, we are lifelong learners and we also love to teach. So uh, we appreciate everybody being on so we can um, teach a little bit and we uh, hope you find it helpful and, and we are definitely looking forward to it. So a little bit about us. Um, I'm Cody Barnett, Body Works Physical Therapy and Concussion Center. And I'm Dr. Damian Heiser, Body Works Physical Therapy and Concussion Center. And uh, we specialize in helping keep people mobile and active and off pain pills. And so as part of that, um, one of the things that we love people to do is exercise. So we love our patients that go out and walk. We love our patients that go out and run uh, and um, having an active lifestyle. Yeah, but sometimes along with that comes a little bit of knee soreness uh, or a little knee pain. And if that's keeping you from walking or keeping you from running, then obviously that's something that we want to help you address and give you some tools and some information that you can use so that you can stay active and do the things that you love. Um, so um, uh, I think we've got everybody, it looks like we've got everybody is on, um, everybody's muted. If, if you do you have a question, um, we are going to do questions at the end. Um, and um, reminder that at the end of this, we're going to be doing a drawing for a free pair of running insoles. So stay on till the end uh, when we'll do the drawing. And that is just for those people that are with us live. So um, if you are um, watching the replay, um, that's why you got to watch live. So you can win the swag, win the stuff. So um, uh, are we ready? Are we ready to go? I think we're ready to okay. go here. So, all right, we're going to rock and roll. And uh, Dr. Damien is going to share screen. We're going to get right into the common knee injuries and knee pain problems that we see with runners and walkers. All right, everyone. Bear with us for one second as we get this kind of brought up real quick. Okay. All right, gang, if everyone's able to see this uh, tonight, go ahead and just type yes in the chat for us. Let us know, we'll kind of give a second here, but you should be seeing the start of our PowerPoint here. Um, perfect. Excellent. All right, everyone, thanks so much. So. Again, my name is Dr. Damian Heiser here with Body Works Physical Therapy and Concussion Center. And tonight's main focus uh, is solving knee pain in runners and walkers. So, um, you know, quick, quick kind of story here, and, and maybe this is you, um, but, you know, maybe you're getting into running, maybe you're getting into walking here, getting into some exercise. You've been doing really good for a couple of weeks. Um, and then, you know, mid walk, mid run, one day you kind of get that knee soreness, some of that knee pain, potentially, maybe it's in front of your knee, maybe it's on the side, maybe it's behind it. Um, you know, the next morning you wake up and it's a little bit stiff. It's a little bit gummed up. Um, and now it's starting to hurt with stairs. It's starting to hurt walking longer distances here. Um, you know, we're having these issues happen um, and things were going so well. What went wrong? What is this that's bothering me? Um, and if that sounds like you or someone you know, then this is the perfect place to be right now. And we're going to talk a little bit about why does that happen and what these things look like here. So um, real quick, some housekeeping things. So the agenda for us today is a few things we want everyone to take away from uh, today's webinar. So you know, the first thing is we want to learn about these common knee problems that keep us from being active, doing our favorite things at this point. We want to discover the root causes as to why these things happen. Why do these problems occur? We want to dispel and get rid of some of these myths that are associated with these kind of common knee injuries. We want to really kind of present the factual information um, and help alleviate maybe some anxieties, maybe some things that we've heard in the past at this point. And then really gain clarity is what do we do next? What are the next steps? Um, if you have this problem and we learn more about it tonight, what do I do to solve it? Where do I go from here? So with that said, knee pain, it's extremely common, especially in active people, right? You know, this is geared toward runners and walkers, but anyone in between, you know, it's very common to have your knees hurt uh, and lots of people go through it. What we're going to focus on is what we feel is the most common types of knee problems that we see here every day in the clinic. And that is going to be patellofemoral pain, uh, otherwise known as kneecap pain, ilial tibial band pain, also known as IT band pain or IT band syndrome, 
Uh, and then lastly, patellar tendinopathy. Um, might have heard this called tendinitis in the past. We'll kind of talk a little bit more about that once we get a little bit closer to there. So, um, but we're going to kind of go in order here and just start from the top at this point. So our first thing that we're talking about, patellofemoral pain, or kind of think of this as kneecap pain, pain around or behind the kneecap. So what is it? Kneecap pain isolated to the front of the knee, around the kneecap, or underneath the kneecap. When does this get worse with? What do people who typically suffer from patellofemoral or kneecap pain typically experience? Well, going downstairs is something we hear a lot. That's a problem with people suffering with this. Um, sitting for a long time, just sitting in a chair off the bed in the office at school potentially, um, and your knee just starts to hurt. Just sitting there is causing your knee to have some achiness, some pain. Um, again, running and walking. We see this a lot, very common in our runners, especially and then squatting, whether that's at the gym, whether that's because you dropped the pencil or your purse on the floor, everything in between, really kind of putting your knee in that bent position that really seems to aggravate this for you. And so what happens with this and why does this happen? Well, simply this is irritation of the joint that gets formed between the kneecap and the thigh bone, also known as the femur. Um, and it's an irritation of that joint. Um, for various reasons, that becomes inflamed, it becomes upset, irritated, and starts to cause us pain. Um, and we tend to see this for a few different things, which we'll go over a little bit later, um, but really just that joint that's irritated. Um, sometimes there can potentially be some swelling with this, but mainly this is very much pain that's really isolated to the front of our kneecap, around the kneecap, and underneath it. Um, so that's kind of patellofemoral kneecap pain. And there, there's actually, uh, uh, to, if, if this ever happens to you, type, <clears throat> type me in the chat, but um, there's actually a, a name, we, we call it moviegoer syndrome, a mm. moviegoer sign, where the person goes to the movies, you sit for two hours during the movie, and then you go to get up out of the seat, and it's like, oh, my knees are stiff and sore, and um, uh, so it's called moviegoer sign, um, it's, so it's kind of a funny, kind of a funny thing, but uh, but that's a that's a common complaint that people will have with this as well. And anymore, we might want to just call it like Netflix science. Or Netflix. I think a lot of people are staying home and watching stuff on on their laptops and computers. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, having sitting for a long time just causing that knee to hurt. This is a very common hallmark sign of this here. And uh, I'm going to call someone out here, but Nathan Gilman, he just graduated from physical therapy school, so he's he's heard of this sign, I'm sure, from one <laughs> of our professors here. So. Um, we're going to go on to our next kind of topic here, and this is ileal tibial band syndrome, IT band pain. So, you know, what is this? Kind of think of this as that knee pain that's a little bit more on the outside of the knee here. Um, it's not in front. It's clearly not in front. It's very clearly not in back, and it's not on the inside, and it's really just on that outside part of the knee. Maybe it goes right over the very front of the shin bone because that's just where our IT band tends to stop on most people is right in front of the shin bone there. Um, but really a lot of people get some aggravation on the outside part of their knee here. And again, where does this get worse with a lot of people? Running and walking especially. Um, and this kind of can affect both uh, pretty evenly, I would argue, across the board. Standing for long periods of time, people will start to notice that this really starts to bother them, this outside knee pain. And really, you know, the last problem, our kneecap pain was more from having that knee in a bent position for a long time. This tends to pop up most for people when they go from being in the bent position to going to a more upright standing posture. So really it's the actual movement itself, not being in a position or when the knee is just totally straight because that's where we tend to get a lot of uh, tension and elongation of this IT band. Um, and what really happens with this is you know, the side T band is this very thick uh, tissue, very, very thick, but there's this fat pad underneath that tissue that kind of cushions our knee a little bit. And this fat pad can get really irritated. So the more that that gets compressed and tensed and irritated, the more that we start to get pain with this at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and we tend to see this again in our walkers and our runners, having more of that tensions upright position or moving to that upright position is where we get this. And again, this is very clearly pain that's on the outside. You can almost trace it along your IT band. And we have kind of more of an anatomy picture here with this, um, but you can see potentially there's this very, very thick um, fascia right here, this white stuff that runs across the side of the knee. And then 
kind of ends at the very bottom, right on top of the shin bone there. So that's our IT band. And in most people, it's very palpable. They, they pretty much draw a line for us. Um, and it kind of tells the whole story right there. And, um, and you can sometimes get some problems up here on the side of the hip with this as well. Mm -hmm. But um, usually they're sometimes up here on the, on the hip bone. Um, so that's IT band, another very common syndrome that we see with people. Um, and kind of our last one that we want to talk about here, and you know, this is one that we see a lot, especially in our runners here, um, but also in some of our jumping athletes, basketball athletes, football athletes, especially can get this particular condition. Um, really anyone who's kind of taken on a lot of walking recently, or if you've done a lot of hiking at this point, it's kind of summertime. I already know a few of my patients are heading out to Colorado this weekend, um, and one that's kind of dealt with this issue right now. So um, something that equally affects uh, both kinds of patients here. But I kind of mentioned earlier on in the webinar here that, you know, you might have heard this referred to as tendonitis. Um, and we've kind of changed our tune on this a little bit. We call it a tendinopathy now, which really the process is just different here. Um, but really what this is, is this is pain that's very much kind of like IT band syndrome was very isolated to the outside of the knee. This type of pain tends to be more isolated to in the front of the knee, but we all know where our kneecap is, right? We can all kind of tell where that is. This is very much right underneath that where we get this. It might go up a little bit to the kneecap, but doesn't tend to be behind the kneecap like patellofemoral pain, doesn't necessarily tend to go around it, or doesn't necessarily tend to be on the side of the knee. Um, this is in front and kind of below the kneecap here. Um, and when does this tend to get worse for most people? Well, we tend to hear a lot of people have issues at the very start of their run, or if they're doing a long walk, they might start to have their knee pain at the start of the walk. After five or so minutes, um, things tend to warm up. It feels a little bit better, but then at the end of the run or the end of the walk, they'll tend to have more pain there. And we tend to see people having a lot more pain with just using the knee period here. So they'll say like, man, Damien, stairs hurt, squatting hurts. Um, it feels pretty stiff in the morning, especially for people when this has gone on for a long time. They'll wake up and kind of tell us, man, my knee is just really, really stiff and it really hurts in the morning. When I get it going, it feels better. But then when I start to kind of do more of my activities, it comes right back. And this is one of those that we tend to see rest, uh, doesn't tend to get rid of this for most people. This is very much one where we need to be very active to kind of help get rid of it here. But, you know, why does this happen for most people? Again, this is kind of where we've shifted a little bit in our thought, but really it's the tendon itself uh, is just not able to keep up with what we needed to do as human beings. So whether that's running, whether that's walking, um, whatever that may be for you, our tendon just isn't quite up to snuff, truly. Mm -hmm. And the way that we fix it is we just kind of bring it back up to snuff here. But um, it's very, it's variable for certain people. We do tend to see it a lot in our runners and our walkers. And again, people are doing a little bit more jumping type movements too. We'll see it there, but um, tend to see this happen to a lot of people who have taken on new types of exercise, taken on more intense walks potentially, or maybe you've signed up for that marathon training program at this point and you're running more long runs, you're running longer than you have at this point, or maybe you're going on a trip to, I have a patient going to Disney World actually. So she's yeah. kind of been upping her walking at this point and she's, yeah. we're kind of dealing with this at this point um, and kind of getting her prepared for that. It's just been too much too soon really. And we've just got to work a little more on that. So here's and here's a common story um, for people with tendinopathy is and I mean that you will I'll hear this a lot. Person comes in, they say, Hey, I have this pain. Um, so I stopped activity X, whatever activity X is. Um, so I stopped for, for a, a month. Mm -hmm. I just quit doing it for a month and the pain got better, but then I, I started going back to activity X and, and the pain was still there. It's like I rested it, but nothing changed. Yeah. And it, that's that's a really common story with tendinopathy is, is rest typically does not fix this. It's something where we have to progressively load the tendon over time. Um, and that actually changes the, the tissue. It actually changes the connective tissue to make it more resilient and strong. Yeah. And this is this tends to be, I would argue, probably the most frustrating of all that we've talked about because for the past two issues, Rest tends to be helpful for those. 
but this is one where people have tried the rest, you know, they've maybe tried a few other things and just really hasn't helped. Mm -hmm. And this is where they're really coming into us and, and really worried about, I don't know if there's a future for me in this activity, mm -hmm. um, if there's a future for me in this type of exercise, because it just hurts and it won't get better. Or do, or do I need surgery? Or do I need, yeah, especially. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's where we come in and we find the silver linings and figure out what's the problem here. Mm -hmm. um, but this is arguably the most frustrating of the three we've talked about for people. But, you know, with that said, let's kind of talk just a little bit more about what really are the most common root causes of this issue at this point. And that's kind of what we really want to focus on here is the root cause. Um, you know, we won't overload or bore anyone with specifics on all of these things, but just for what we look like, what we look for as physical therapists, as professionals who rehab people with this every single day, what's the root cause here? For some people, there's some hip weakness that's driving some of these issues here. Um, for, for some things, we tend to only look right where it is, but we really need to look potentially above it. We need to look below it. And that's where things like foot and ankle mechanics come into play here. We've got potentially some weakness in the hips. We've got a foot and ankle that's maybe not moving the way that we need or want it to. That can cause some problems to meet in the middle there. And the knee tends to take a lot of the brunt force of that stuff. Um, but we don't wanna ignore it completely either. For a lot of people, there tends to be some quadricep or that big front muscle on the front of your thigh there. Uh, for some people that's weak and we've gotta just work on getting that strong too. Um, for some of our runners, more specific to the runners here, but even our walkers can have some issues here too, but just taking a look at gait mechanics. Is there something that's maybe a little off, a little wonky with that? Do we need to change something, cue something a little bit different? Um, you know, we tend to find that the issues pop up when we really take a deep dive into that. Training load errors. So this kind of goes back to what we talked about where maybe you're have something planned this summer, uh, a big hiking trip or going to Disney World with the family or maybe you just signed up for this half marathon, a marathon training plan, um, or you just got in the gym and you're doing a lot more exercise. Um, but again, we maybe do too much too soon um, and we start to have this training load error. We've just taken on too much stress to the body and it's just not able to handle it the way that it needs to. Um, something we see pretty common too. And sometimes the, it's a good one where we just educate and we really talk through the program how do we fine tune this to make this successful for you at that point um, and really get it to be the Goldilocks amount of what we want load wise here so that we can continue and be successful with whatever activity that is. And then something else we never want to discount, we never want to shy away from is looking at things like, well, how have we been sleeping over the past week, over the past month? How's our diet? Are we eating things that are promoting a healthy body that's promoting low amounts of inflammation in the body? And then just how stressed are we? You know, how is work going? Um, how's our relationships? How's our lives? You know, last week we had a really fantastic webinar talking about burnout and stress. Um, and we've learned a lot that, that night that that stuff is going to bleed into our physicality and our physical lives too. Mm -hmm. And if there's some uprootness there, something off there, we see it time and again where that leads into some of this more musculoskeletal, some of this more physical pain that we see here. So we never want to discount that stuff because it's equally as important here. But mm -hmm. this is what we tend to see as the root causes. Um, and these are the things that we tend to start to address with people in order to get them over these things, keep them in the activity or get them back to that activity mm -hmm. eventually. It just potentially looks individual for each person here. There's no one size fits all approach. I'm going, to, I'm going to speak a little bit to the person that uh, maybe is not a big runner mm -hmm. or a big walker, but maybe the person that just started something. So this is something that I run into a lot of people. They, um, they start a walking program, they start some sort of exercise program, and they enjoy it. And they're feeling better, and they're losing a couple of pounds, and they, they're, you know, they feel better. And so they get excited. And so they start doing a little bit more and a little bit more, and then they'll have one of these injuries pop up. And then there's the friend, they get frustrated. It's like, well, gee, you know, this didn't work. You know, I had this pain and it, I was so excited and I was doing so well. And now this has interfered with it. But what I always tell people is, is, is these things are relatively, I mean, they're problematic, but in the grand scheme of things are relatively minor. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather have a person that's going out and trying to exercise, trying to walk, trying to run, trying to do those things versus the negative side effects of not doing it. Exactly. You know, a little knee soreness we can deal with, but hey, it's, it's better than having a heart bypass, you know? <laughs> so 
um, it is something that uh, you know we want people to to take part in these activities. Don't let something like this derail your program. Um, sometimes it's just getting your body used to it and, and helping your body be more robust and resilient so it can tolerate this. But um, but the bottom line is all of these things are very treatable. There's hope for all of these things, and um, the advantages of, of continuing an exercise program far outweigh uh, the disadvantages of stopping it. So uh, there's so many benefits for our life uh, in, in so many ways. Yeah. I, always, I tell all my patients, the fountain of youth is, is right out in the gym area there where we've got all the equipment, all the means to exercise. It's just what's the right of the best exercise for you. Yeah. There's no bad one. There's just the one that's right at that time. So, and sometimes we need to do some of this stuff on the front end to achieve the end goal, um, which is the beauty of things. So uh, with that said, we want to just talk about a few of the myths that are associated with a lot of these injuries and really just knee pain in general, I would argue. Um, and really the biggest, the, the one that everyone that comes through our door, one of the things that they're most concerned about is always going to be, Damien, if I damage something in my knee, is there something that I need surgery for? You know, the pain is, it means there's something wrong with my knee, right? I've, I've broken something, I've damaged something. Uh, and what we tend to find most of the time is it's not correlated very well. Um, pain is one of those things that, is very interesting. That's very unique. And we can have a whole separate webinar on that topic. Um, but what we know very, very well is it's not always directly correlated with damage. And especially with these three things that we've gone over today, there typically really isn't any damage that's happened. There's some irritation, there's some aggravation, there's some pain, but none of these patients ever net tend to need any sort of surgical intervention. Um, and I would argue that what we do with physical therapy tends to get almost everyone better with these things. Um, and we tend to find there's not been damage that's happened. It's just too much too soon or some other thing that's going on here. Mm -hmm. Um, and something else we hear a lot too, kind of going along with that same topic is, well, it must be arthritis. Um, and I, <laughs> I've had patients as young as in their twenties come in with one of the things we've talked about and said, I have arthritis in my knee. Um, you know, and one thing that we have tended to found at this point is, even if someone potentially does have arthritis on an image, for instance, again, that's not very well correlated to pain and it's not very well correlated to, hey, we need to have surgery on this knee right away or even we need to have it period. Um, what we tend to say here is we treat the person, we don't treat the image. Um, you mean, mean x-ray? X-ray, yeah. exactly. X-ray, CT scan, MRI. Mm -hmm. um, and most of these problems here have really nothing to do with arthritis. And, in fact, uh, a lot of knee pain really has not much to do with arthritis, especially in certain populations that we see, and especially in our active populations. Uh, and active people, people like us who will go out, exercise, whatever that may be, we tend to do really, really well. Um, and arthritis tends not to be the thing that's going on. And that's where we just figure out what is the root cause of the problem at that point. Um, another thing we hear is, uh, exercise will make this worse. You know, I'm having this knee pain. I'm having this patellar tendinopathy, like we've talked about, which we've kind of talked at this point, we actually need to exercise it more to get it better. Um, in fact, for almost all of these things, exercise is the answer. It's just how much do we need to do at this point? Um, how much is too much? How much isn't enough? We need to get in that Goldilocks zone of enough load to make successful adaptation and make success happen for us to reduce pain and improve our bodies and tissues capacity. Again, we also hear it's due to age. I, you know, I was 59 last year, I'm 60 this year, and now I have knee pain. <laughs> um, and, you know, we know very well that there's uh, people of all sorts of ages and all sorts of types have pain and suffer with it. Age is never the, the only issue why we have things going on. We can name countless examples of phenomenal athletes who um, are doing incredible things at, at insane so the, ages. The 100, the 100 year old guy that just this last couple of weeks ago um, broke the new record for the 100 meter dash. Exactly. And he's 100 years old. Yeah. I don't there think that go. guy's going around blaming his, his age <laughs> on, on most things here. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's where we come in and say, you know what, we see people who have been your age and have this problem, we can get them out of pain. And we see that every single day and we can get them to do the activities, exercises that they love. Um, and really, you know, things that a lot of people 
come in and, and have this, this notion in their head of is, you know, I'm having this knee pain. I'm not going to be able to run anymore. I can't train the way that I want to anymore. I can't get on the floor and play with my grandkids because my knee is bothering me and there's something wrong with it. I can't go on that hike this summer with my family or my friends. Um, and I, I can't live an active lifestyle because I have this knee pain. Um, and again, kind of like we've alluded and talked about at this point, that's really rarely the case. And really it's finding what's the root cause of this issue? How can we improve that? And how can we get you back to doing the things that you love to do? Um, whether it's walking, whether it's running and anything in between and outside of that. So with that said, um, you know, what are potentially the next steps at this point? We've learned about some of these things. Maybe this sounds like you or something you're dealing with or know someone that's dealing with this. Um, what do I do now? Well, if this sounds like you, a friend or a loved one, or if your active lifestyle has come to a halt because of knee pain, or if you feel like your performance is suffering in a certain category because of your knee pain, where do we go from here? And that's where we want to kind of offer our runners and walkers knee pain assessment here. Um, so what that looks like, um, and this is for all of our attendees on the webinar now and anyone who's watching the replay later on, this is offered for you exclusively. And what this is, is a $17 visit um, that we actually are donating the proceeds to a charity, whether that's uh, our Challenge Games or Youth Horizons, mm -hmm. um, donating all of those proceeds to some great causes here. And what this does is it sets up the door, opens the door for us to have about a 30 minute conversation consult here to really just talk about your knee pain, talk about what's going on. Um, is this something that's one of these three diagnoses potentially, or even anything else? And how can we help? And what do we do from there? Um, whether that's, hey, we need to take a more formal look at this. We really need to develop what is the root cause of this issue at this point? Or is this, hey, this is some normal knee soreness we're experiencing. Um, this looks, everything looks very normal to us. You know, I think we can kind of continue on with what we're doing here, um, either just with some observation or just with some caution on mm -hmm. some things, or if we're just full, full steam ahead here. Mm -hmm. um, and the main, you know, the main goal of offering this is just simply we, one of the things we run into a lot with people is, is they, they have a pain and they have a problem. And because they don't have any clarity as far as what they should do, it's like, well, I've, I've gone to Dr. Google. Um, I've gone to my doctor, they gave me anti-inflammatory medications, I've gone to the massage therapist, I've gone to, you know, whatever, you pick, pick your provider, and they just don't know what to do. And so the goal of this is to provide some confidence and some clarity so that at least you have a game plan, um, whether that be working with us or, or uh, doing something else. And, you know, if there is something that we feel like bears more investigation or bears a surgical consult or something like that, we'll tell you that as well. But the main thing is just to be able to give people confidence and clarity because so often we have people that have let things go on for months or years simply because they just don't know flat out know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to be you know, give people you know, some, some clarity as far as what the next steps might be. So at least you know, at least you know what's on the menu. Yeah, um, and just have the confidence of where to go from there at that point. Um, and anyone who's interested in this, uh, knows someone who's interested in this, um, there's a few different ways that we are able to claim this tonight here. So the first one really is calling our phone number or texting our number here, 316-558-8808. Um, or if email is your preferred method of kind of contact with most people, um, our email address is down below, info at bodyworksphysicaltherapy.net. And then something else that we're gonna do right now as well, we're gonna stop sharing our screen here for a second. Um, and we're gonna be posting into the chat box right now, if anyone is interested, uh, a link here where you can go click. Um, you fill out uh, some information and kind of really just tell us what's going on. And that way we can kind of contact you once we receive that uh, within 24 hours there. So, yeah. So, um... Next steps is questions. We've just been um, uh, feeding you through a fire hose, so and laying out a lot of information. So, what questions do you have? Feel free to either unmute yourselves and come on live, or uh, feel free to type in the chat.
I think one of my issues is I've had really tight calves, especially when walking a lot, and that's led to that pain right behind my kneecap. Is there any recommendations on ways to prevent that and loosen up my calves? That's a really good question. So I'm gonna ask you some more detail-y stuff. Um, why, why do you feel like the tight calves are causing the knee pain? What's the, what's the steps that have caused you to, to have that observation? Uh, typically it comes with lots of walking and I notice my calves are tight afterwards and then normally a day or so after that, I can notice some pain. Hmm. So pain that's where I'm making my assumption. Huh? So the knees, a the couple of days after the knees are sore. Mm -hmm. After, okay. And then um, just out of curiosity, have you tried doing things um, to help that in terms of stretching your calves or any other interventions? I've tried stretching and different methods of like massage and whatnot. And that's helped somewhat, but it depends on how much I'm walking. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Very helpful. So um, the short answer without seeing you do that, it's difficult to say exactly. Um, if you, it's, you, I like your comment about how you've correlated those things. Um, so I think you're, you're probably on the right track. Uh, the question that I guess I would ask is uh, why, why is the cat, why does the calf keep tightening up? Why is it not, if you've been stretching it and loosening up, why is that not staying? Why is it not staying in place? Um, so that would maybe be the deeper question is why, uh, why that is. So there can be different causes for that. Sometimes there can be some um, neurological types of things that go on that keep our calves tight. Um, sometimes our calves can guard a little bit because of some weaknesses in other places. So it's trying to take up the slack. Um, so it's a really good question. I would say just for the purposes of, of answering it here on your on the webinar, I'd say stretch your calves. Um, but I think the figuring out the root cause of that and figuring out, okay, why are these calves continuing to tighten up on you instead of, instead of loosening up? Okay. Looks like good, got good question. A question in the chat from Janet. So I've been told I'm bone on bone in at least one knee. Can I still run or walk? Can you recommend any supplements? So um, in terms of the bone on bone, that is uh, an arthritis situation where the cartilage has been thinned out um, on the bones. And um, uh, it can depend on the severity. So and some people, when that gets just super, super, super bad, that is something that can require surgical intervention, okay? Um, but for a lot of people, they get told that, but then get given no other information. And uh, for example, um, we just had a, a, one of the programs that we offer is an arthritis program that we just had several of our clients go through. Um, and it, um, we go over specific strengthening and loading exercises. And several of the people in this program had bone on bone arthritis. And uh, all of them saw improvement as far as their ability to do things um, in terms of physical activity and uh, golfing and exercise um, with going through the program. So my short answer to you, Janet, is yes, absolutely. You can still run and walk. The question is, is, is what, are, what are the limits or the boundaries that maybe you, you may have, but then also what are the other things that we can be doing to help make those knees more resilient to overcome some of the arthritis that's going on there, which is very feasible and very possible. That's, that's one of the things we specialize in. Um, as far as the supplements, um, one of the things, uh, we actually hadn't planned on talking about that tonight, but we sure can. Um, one of the things that we have here at the office, I can't tell, tell this without giving a little story, and that is um, we have a product here called um, Invigo Flex Glucosamine Sulfate. Uh, this is a brochure, and if you um, let us know or contact us some way, Janet, I'd be happy to drop this in the mail to you. Or if you wanted to come by, I'd be happy to give you some samples. But <clears throat> I have some arthritis in my fingers. And of course, I use my hands a lot throughout the day. And uh, several years ago, I started getting a lot of soreness and stiffness in my fingers. And so I, um, supplements are not regulated by the FDA. And um, so I went on this quest to figure out, okay, if I'm going to take this stuff, what's the best stuff to take 
that actually has some evidence and some research and some scientific um, stuff behind it. Because um, there are a lot of supplements that come over from overseas and even here in America that when they test them, the stuff that's in them is not actually the stuff that's supposed to be in them. <laughs> so um, I went uh, and poured through uh, an exhaustive uh, set of research through all the medical journals. And this, anyway, this long story short, this is the product that I came upon, started using it. And I can tell you when I go off of it, guess what? My fingers are, are stiff and sore. When I use it, my fingers don't hurt during the day. But um, anyway, that's why that's the particular product that we sell and we have here at the office. Um, and I'd be happy to get you more information or let you try it. So um, sorry for the long-winded answer, but I think it helps for people to know kind of some background there. Very good question. Very common one too. We hear that question a lot. Um, and if that didn't completely answer that for you, Janet, please feel free to type in more or come on live. So any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, you want to take that? Sure. <clears throat> so Nathan's question is, how much do you recommend increasing distance per week for an effective running program? Um, and this is one of those answers where it's, it depends, right? Uh, which is always a fun answer, but you know, in truth, it's, it's very, you know, there's a lot of factors that are going to go into that, right? Um, running age, you know, how long have you been doing this for? What are you used to? Where do you run? How fast do you run? Um, we could take a look at all of these metrics. Um, and that becomes arguably very important when kind of structuring a training program. And for a lot of people that I work with, that's the kind of conversations we have. Now, with that said, um, kind of an old rule of thumb that gets used, um, and there's some backing behind this in, in what we've read, but um, really it's a 10% rule. So increasing weekly volume mileage per week by about 10% of what you did last week. Um, however, you can do some mental gymnastics and realize, okay, well, if I ran five miles last week, 10% of that is you know, a mile or you, know, you can do a lot of gymnastics and think, well, that's not a whole lot of increase. Um, and maybe it's not. And especially if you're brand new, maybe that's very appropriate. Um, you know, for some people who have got a lot of experience with that, that tends not to fit them quite as well. And that's where the it depends comes from. Um, but to me, that's always been a good rule of thumb. It's one that I tend to work off for a lot of new people, whether it's a running program or even a walking program where we kind of use that, whether it's mileage based. So actually, this is how many miles or it's time-based, hey, this is how long, how many minutes I need you to do this for. Um, that's a good rule of thumb. It generally keeps people pretty safe and at least gets them into a program, gets them exposed a little bit more, and it opens the door for delving into it potentially more. But mm -hmm. to answer your question and like a sh in this, in our format here, Nathan, that's kind of my best recommendation. Um, but I think something that's also really important is just working with someone closely on that who can make it successful for you for sure. Um, and, you know, keeping into account other variables that can come into that too. Okay, any other questions? I was just wondering what um, the knee assessment would entail if we came in for the running and walking, the knee assessment for having knee yeah. issues. Very good question, Karen. Um, so basically, um, with, with these $17 sessions, it's a way to just come in and um, basically do a, a testing and a screening um, and figure out which category your knee problem is. Um, it's not going to be exhaustive. You know, We're not going to do a full running exam and a full strength exam uh, at that level. Um, but it is a way to kind of come in and dip your toe in the water, so to speak and um, just figure out, okay, what's going on is, do I just have a little bit of soreness or this is, a, is this a serious thing I need to, you know, deal with and take care of? And basically just help a person know what should my next, next steps be. But in, to your, I guess, more detailed question answer is, um, we're going to look at your basic range of motion. We're going to find out where it hurts. Um, we're going to let you know what's going on. And, and then from that, detail for you. Okay, you need to do, I'd recommend you do X or I'd recommend you do Y or I'd recommend you do Z. OK. 
Okay, any other questions? Okay, so Dustin uh, asks in the chat, what exercises have you found that are most effective for patellofemoral pain syndrome and patellar tendinopathy? Um, so Dustin, this is kind of a, a similar answer to Nathan in a way where it, de it depends, truly. Um, they're, and they're two completely different problems. Yeah, you know, and what works best for Dustin, for instance, might not work exactly as good for uh, random name for Stacy, for instance. Um, you know, really figuring out what is the best thing for you at this time. Um, we have some protocols that we'll go through with some people, but, you know, that's kind of like a A to Z kind of thing. There's all these other things that are in the middle there. Um, and you could go in a certain direction and especially depending on what your activity is, what your exercise is or what you want to do at this point. Um, you know, in terms of giving very a, a generic answer, this is what you need to do, Dustin. We need to know a little bit more. Um, that's where potentially what we're offering, offering is really, really handy to kind of funnel that in a little bit more and really give you some more options on that. Um, and I'll say um, in general, uh, it depends on like what a person's volume is, um, what their activity level is, how long have they been running, what are their goals, um, are they doing this just for general exercise, are they trying to train for something, um, what kind of surfaces are you on, are you doing a lot of hills or not hills, um, it's just very different, you, know, you know, it's kind of like prescribing a drug, there's a lot of nuances that go into that um, in terms of the prescription and, uh, and, and what basically kind of goes back to when we talked about the root cause, mm -hmm. what's the true root cause. So frequently um, I have, you know, we have, we, we call the knee the squeaky wheel frequently. So usually when a person has having knee pain, it's usually a squeaky wheel for something else. Uh, there's something going on at the ankle, there's something going on at the hip. Uh, there's some, some issues other places. And so I, it's actually pretty common. I'll have somebody come in with knee pain and I don't have them do any knee exercise. <laughs> I've got them doing a hip exercise or something uh, because that's the root cause and uh, really dials down to that. What's, what's our main problem? Yeah. And Dustin, Nathan's vouching for you here right, right now, man, that you got some running credentials. So if this is a problem, you want to get this figured out, I think. Um, and, and it might, might be a fun one to figure out for you. So we, we want to keep you on the roads if this is a problem for you here, sir. Okay, well, we really appreciate everybody's questions. These are all really, really good questions. Um, I like them. Any others? Um, I'll just say, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, we had a lot of people that emailed us and said, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it live, but can I watch the replay? So if you're watching this on the replay and you have a question that hasn't been answered, um, we'll put our info back. I'll oh, maybe have you put that in. Uh, we'll put our info back up so um, you can contact us through this. You can um, feel free to um, shoot us an email or contact us through the link we put in the chat. Um, I'll just keep that up there. You know, we still like to talk on the phone. So you don't have to sign up, quite frankly, you, you don't have to sign up for this um, runners and walkers knee pain assessment. If you just want to, you know, give us a ring, um, we can set up a time to do a quick chat on the phone um, just to, you know, quite frankly, we don't like to waste people's time or money. So, um, you know, if you just have questions, you want to give us a ring and, and uh, see if it's something that we think we can help, we're happy to do that as well. But if you're watching this on replay, feel free to, um, call us or email us there and we'd be happy to chat. Um, let's see. So um, we need to do a drawing. We've got some stuff to give um, away. So we are giving away a, a pair of running insoles. And so uh, these are a um, supportive insole. It gives um, really good support through the back of our heel um, and through the arch. And uh, these are um, Normally, I think, I forget the exact dollar amount. I, ran, I want to say around $74.99. Mm -hmm. But in either case, we're giving away a free pair for everybody that's live. So if you are not live, you are missing out. Um, 
And so Damien is going to do the honors, apparently. We've got everybody's name in the hat. Um, Everyone's in our bucket here. And I'll, I'll do this so everyone can see. There's no bias here. If yeah. everyone would be uh, open-minded to giving a drum roll as I do this here real mm -hmm. quick. Or I can't bring it up. <laughs> or I'm going to keep my eyes closed. Here we go. The lucky winner tonight is Connie Shag. And uh, Connie's not on the Unfortunately, call. Connie, you've missed out. We got, we're going again here real fast. Eyes closed, no bias, not looking at anyone. I've got two. And we've got Gala, Gala. Krause. Sorry, Gala. I'm sorry, Gala. Here we go. Third time's the charm. I'm feeling real good about this one. I apologize. My eyes were open, but I didn't look. Jody Tronsgard. Jody. Jody's not here. All right. We're four times the charm. Here we go. Um, Owen. Owen Barber. Owen's, there he is. There, okay. Yeah, I was saying, I, yeah, Owen, Owen. Yeah. Cool. Congratulations, Owen. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Our pleasure. So um, we've got your email address. Um, we will email you and or you have our, our phone number and contact information. You can contact us either way. Um, but we will get you hooked up with these in the correct size. So um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Good job. Easiest thing you've ever won here, Owen. Aren't you glad all those other people didn't show up on the call tonight? Definitely. <laughs> His fingers crossed every time I pull the name. Uh, okay. All right. So um, we're going to type the uh, our uh, contact information back in the chat if anybody wants to use that. Um, and um, we're getting close to wrapping up here. So um, any other questions that have you've popped in your brain um, since since uh, we finished up here. So any other questions, feel free to let us know. Either unmute yourself and come on live or type in the chat. Okay. All right, well, we will be sending out an email I'm going to give you the screen share. We'll be sending out an email. Um, should get it by end of the day tomorrow. Uh, that will have a copy of the replay. I know there's a couple of people that came on a little bit later and or left a little early. So you will have access to the replay. Um, we'll, we'll send the link to that in the um, email. Um, uh, Owen will get with you in regards to your insoles. And, um, and then if anybody would like to take advantage of our assessment uh, for $17, um, reminder, we're, we've got, um, actually, we do need to say that, uh, we've got four that we actually booked out. We're blessed to be super busy this week. We do have four for the webinar that we've booked out for this week. Um, and so if you're one of the first four, you'll, you'll lock in that. Um, next week is a short week because of Memorial Day, so we're going to probably have less opportunities for that next week. Um, so if this is something that interests you, um, please um, hit us up as soon as you can um, because um, they will fill up. Uh, they always do. And um, so if, if you want to take advantage of that, feel free to hit us up, uh, shoot us a text or a call, shoot us an email. Uh, we'll be rocking and rolling tomorrow morning, first thing, getting these set up um, and, uh, and let us know. All right. Um, in closing, anything, any other things? Um, you know, nothing in particular. Knee pain is extremely common with a lot of people in various walks of life. Um, the fortunate news is it's extremely treatable for most everyone um, without having any sort of crazy surgical intervention here. Uh, it's really just what the root cause of this issue and it goes from there We figure that out. So um, anyone who's having some issues, who's worried by this issue, has maybe uh, felt similar to some of the things we've expressed tonight. Um, if that seems like it's fitting you, we'll take advantage of this stuff. Um, we want to get you to where you want to be, and we're on your team here. So yeah, so yeah, feel free to give us a ring. So um, again, um, Cody Barnett, uh, Damian Heiser, Body Works Physical Therapy and Concussion Center, 
Um, we want to keep everybody mobile and active and off pain pills. Um, if you have questions, uh, 316-558-8808 or websites, bodyworksphysicaltherapy.net. And um, until next time, we appreciate everybody who's on and watching the replay. Appreciate everybody's time and um, watch your email. We, we will be doing more of these on different, different topics. So uh, we, we'd love you to join us. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay. Have, Have a, a good, good night. night. Bye.